with the SUV market taking over the sedans because of the practical daily use that you can get out of them from the interior to the exterior. Today, Joshua has given us the 2022 Volkswagen Atlas SE with technology in your Aurora Red Metallic here at Volkswagen of Newport Ritchie. What's new? Standard Volkswagen digital cockpit, no more S trim. The largest Volkswagen ever built has been tailored more or less for the United States buyers. Updated tech rolls over from 2021 and a half and the refreshments from 2021. This goes against your Honda Pilot and your Toyota Highlander. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rods and we're gonna go over all the specs and details starting now. <laughs> Every year, the Volkswagen Atlas adds some kind of little touch up and the majority of that is gonna be in the interior. For the exterior, you're gonna receive the LED headlights and daylight runnings along with your LED fog lamps. I do like the fact that everything on the front fascia screams a sporty styling, even though you don't necessarily have the R-Line badging to back it up, but it has a nice tone with the metal look on the lower area. Ground clearance at eight inches, which is gonna be the same as the Toyota Highlander, but it's gonna be better than that Honda Pilot by almost an inch. Just something to take in consideration. The width does flow out with some broad shoulders at 78.3 inches and a height of 70 inches. And I like that we got the black polish over the top and on the lower trim of the bumpers with the three chrome bars. And I also like how it goes over your headlight assembly because it just shows that Volkswagen is paying attention to detail, functional side vents, aligns on the long hood, stress a luxury status for the vehicle. And I do like how the fenders flare out which are 20 inch alloy wheels. These will be standard on the SEL. The SEL R-Line Black will add 20 inch black wheels to it. 13.2 inches is the disc reading for the front. The rear at 12.2 inches, a strut front suspension, a multi-link rear suspension. Both the front and the rear will have your coil springs. The black roof rails is going to set a nice attention to detail for the side profile. I wish that this was in the gloss black and also on the side window trims. I do like that we have the chrome on the lower piece because it just gives a little bit of an added touch to the characteristic of the side profile. The side view mirror caps, the same as the body color, they're power adjustable, heated as well. You got the turn signals in the LED. A length at 198.3 inches. This is gonna be longer than the Honda and the Toyota. The wheelbase will also be larger at 117.3 inches. So you're gonna have some more interior space, which we'll go through in the review. But looking from the side, you could definitely see the structure that they're doing. And I like how the lines indicate the same symbols that are in the door sill. So it is really cool how they keep all that segment tying it together with your LED tail lights with the chrome underneath it that wraps around all the way with your Atlas badging underneath the Volkswagen symbol. You're gonna get a smaller roof spoiler with your shark fin antenna. It's gonna get the high gloss black polish. And I like the luxury look that we're going with in the rear. You have your rear view camera, park distance control for the front and the rear. And you also have your rear track Traffic alert, even though the rear window is enormous, you're pretty much protected. And that's what I like about Volkswagen. A payload of over a thousand pounds towing starts around 2,000 pounds and it goes up to 2,000. Down on the lower note, you're gonna get your dual exhaust outlets. These are just there to look, they're an image there's no exhaust, it's tucked underneath. But because this is the smaller engine trim, I'll let it slide in the fact that this is pretty much the signature that Volkswagen does as well. You do have a power tailgate, so going inside to your cargo at 20.6 cubic feet. You have a 12 volt charger, there's storage underneath the floor with a spare tire and a cargo holder. The third row splits at a 50-50 fold, going to 55.5 cubic feet. The second row bench split folds at a 60-40, max in the cargo to 96.8 cubic feet. The Volkswagen Atlas gives two power choices. Today's model is a 2.0 liter 
TSI four cylinder turbocharged producing 235 horsepower and 258 pound feet of torque that's paired to an eight speed automatic transmission or Tiptronic achieving 21 to 25 MPGs. Because this is the smaller engine option, this is gonna be less power than the Honda and the Toyota. However, you're gonna get the better optimal gas with this one and you still get all that styling and luxury from the exterior. Let me know in the comments what you think about the 2022 Volkswagen Atlas SE with technology as we go into the interior, go over the tech and take this for our test run. Entering inside the Volkswagen Atlas SE with technology, 41.3 inches of headroom, 41.5 inches of legroom, more than the Toyota Highlander and the Honda Pilot with the titanium black VTEC leatherette, eight way power adjustment for the driver, manual for the passenger. I like that they're perforated, they're heated front seats with the contrast stitching. The dashboard is extremely large, which is a good thing because you can tell that this car is a little bit wider and this is the biggest Volkswagen out right now. You have a big storage pocket in the center, underneath it an eight inch touchscreen with voice control. This doesn't have navigation, so you have to use your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You do have AM, FM, HD radio, Sirius XM with 360L and CarNet. You're gonna have a tri-climate control through the Climatronic you'll have a wireless charging pad as well. The nice thing about this is the setup. You got the metal look over the gloss black and you got a wood look on the passenger side. So they did a good job with giving contrast look to the dash so it's not plain. And I like the fact that it feels a little bit more luxurious and upscale than the Honda. The steering wheel is a leatherette, it's multi-function. You got the cross stitch work and your new Volkswagen digital cockpit which is cool you can change the configuration on both sides which makes it even more intuitive if you have the navigation you could do your radio you could change different settings as for the elbows soft on both sides cup holders you can easily fit i would say a 42 ounce opening up in here it is huge you can fit a large pocketbook i also like the setup that's in the center here you do get the gloss black that is around the cup holders and pretty much encasing the whole center where your gear lever is with the leatherette and you got the silver over the top of it as for the door panel you're going to get one touch up and down for all the windows you get that leatherette with the contrast stitching and i like the pattern structure as for storage you can easily fit three or four 16.9 ounce water bottles, which is efficient. You got a large panoramic moonroof that goes into that second row. Let's check it out. For the second row, I'm at 40.4 inches of headroom, which is more than Toyota and Honda. Legroom at 37.6 inches, which is more than Honda. The setup, the panoramic moonroof comes all the way back here. So that is a nice little setup. As for the center, you're gonna get your air vents, you're gonna get your third climate control setting, two USB-C ports, a home plug, storage behind both of the front seats. The floor is not completely flat, but a nice thing is you can adjust these seats all the way up, and they go pretty far as you can see. You can adjust them all the way back, so that way it gives optimal space for the second or third row, which we'll see when we get there. As for the elbow, soft on both sides, you have a manual sunshade for the second row. As for that door panel, you're gonna get the contrast stitching in the leather red as well one touch up and down storage is great because you got two tiers one for your cell phone or like an ipad something that size more or less and you could probably fit three to four 16.9 ounce water bottles without any issues let's see how i look in the center sitting into the center headroom no problem leg room i'm grazing the back of the passenger seat i moved it back a little bit further than i normally sit if i move my legs like this i'll definitely be blocking the central air vents, but it'll have a lot of leg space for the two occupants next to me. Shoulder space isn't too bad considering the width of the vehicle. But the best part about the second row is you can adjust the seat. So if you really wanna get optimal space for the rear, just adjust it up a little bit and then climb into that third row. For the third row, I'm at 38.3 inches of headroom, 33.7 inches of legroom, which is more than Toyota and Honda. Because we have the SE with technology, two USB-C ports are gonna be on my side. Unfortunately, it's only on one side. So you'd have to give all of your appliances that you want charged, your iPads or your phones, whatever it is, all on one side. You do have air vents on both pillars, so that makes it nice. Two cup holders that can fit a 16.9 ounce water bottle. 20 ounce is gonna be really cutting it tight. As for elbows, you can hear it. It's gonna be hard materials, but I do like the fact that you can put a larger cell phone and you have another component area that you could put almost a tablet size as well. So you do have sufficient space. It's gonna be cramped 
but you can sit two adults my size without too many issues. Taking the 2022 Volkswagen Atlas SEL with technology out for our test run, this is the four cylinder turbocharged. So I like the naturally aspirated V6. They are upping the horsepower in the new one to the 300 horsepower, which should definitely be fun as soon as they get it. We'll obviously do a review on it as well, just to show you the difference in the power because we haven't done a four cylinder turbocharged for quite a while in the Atlas on the channel. So I thought it would be a great alternative so that way you can see the difference in power. The 0 to 60 is going to be more towards the 8 seconds. Now we're going to see how well it performs, giving it some go. Set you back just a little bit. I mean, it's efficient. You know, you're going to get where you need to go and you have plenty of room to get everything done. So if you are looking for the alternative and you want to save a little bit of money, the V6 is going to cost a little bit more. The four cylinder isn't necessarily bad, it's just, it's not going to be as powerful and you're not going to be able to tow as much. So those are some things to take in consideration. If you are comparing it to the Honda or the Toyota, the difference realistically you'll have for towing would be for the all wheel drive and the front wheel drive. So this is almost at that same tier as towing capacity, it's going to be a little bit less. As for the stance, you do have some broad shoulders, so that does help giving you the flare that this is a longer vehicle, especially with the hood structure. So it does make it easy. That way you can tell from maneuverability. We also have the blind spot monitoring, so that does make it a little bit easier too, because if you are to look, you can basically see to the second row. Third row is gonna be a little bit difficult. Again, the vehicle is a little bit longer and they added some length to it back in 2021. Checking the turn radius at more or less a stop going to be receiving right at two lanes giving it a little gas and it's ready to rock and roll now there is three things i like and three things that i dislike is anything more than that i'd be buying this vehicle the three things that i like the ride whether you get the turbocharge 4 or the v6 you're going to be pleased with it the suspension is really good checking the braking so that way and we'll come back to it so you can see braking on the car you can pretty much stop on a dime no issues the second thing that i like charging ports everywhere when you get the technology package for the se trim i mean it's great the fact that everybody can charge their device and the last thing that i like is how large everyone can actually fit my size in all three rows three things that i dislike i prefer the v6 engine only because it kind of keeps up with the traffic a little bit more now that being said, if you drive the four-cylinder turbo first, you're not going to really think that it's underpowered. It's a very heavy vehicle, though. That's why I kind of like the V6, because it gives you that sufficiency. The second thing that I dislike, the towing. It's only around 2,000 pounds. When you're comparing it to the competition, they're at 3,500 pounds. And the last thing that I dislike about the vehicle is they do not have any regular USB ports or USB-A ports. They're all USB-C ports, and it makes it a little bit more complicated because you have to buy the newer adapters in order to charge, and a lot of the automotive industry is doing it, and I get it. We should be updated with times when it comes to technology, but still offer at least one of those ports, so that way it makes it easier for anybody that does have it they can still charge their phone but as for daily use you can do that without any issues it's going to feel a little bit more wide on the road especially when you look over you can see how wide it is it's going to be a little bit more loud as you can hear there's no dual pane windows on the side as for the comfort driving it on a normal basis you don't really feel anything and that's with 20 inch wheels so that is a nice little aspect because typically you would feel a lot of impurities in the road and you don't actually have that as for dynamics it's going to be more boat derived and that's what you're going to expect out of something like this because it's not full blown spec for sports. The steering wheel in the vehicle is very nice. I like the feel of the steering wheel. They did a great job with the leatherette and the gauge cluster. I like how everything is now getting pretty much the same way that it should be for all of the Volkswagen lines. So you're going to get that digital cockpit and that is something that you know, we're moving forward with technology, and I like that Volkswagen's doing that. We're going to take this back to Volkswagen of Newport Ritchie, go over the reverse camera, and wrap this review up. Switching to reverse, you do have trajectory. It's a pretty clean screen out of this 8-inch infotainment. You can click here so you can see the front and rear sensors as well. So that way it makes it easier for your reversing. I'd like to thank Joshua here at Volkswagen of Newport Ritchie for giving us this 2022 Volkswagen Atlas SE with technology for our car review. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Hawkeye community. If not, click that subscribe button, check out the details of merchandise and everything we do here. Hawkeye rocks.